There's an age old saying in motorsport that oversteer means that the rear end of the car will hit the wall first. Understeer means the front end of the car will hit the wall first. Horsepower is how fast are you gonna hit the wall and torque is how much is it going to move. There's a number of different technical terms and explanations in motorsport. And today I'm gonna to be doing the first of a small series called Motorsport Explained, where I take you through what some of the different terms are and what they mean. So today we're gonna to have a look at oversteer, understeer, balanced throttle, and trail braking. First up on our list then is oversteer. And as I said, oversteer is the uh, rear end of the car hitting the wall first if you go off. But uh, to break it down in a bit more detail, what we're essentially saying is the rear end of the car loses grip. So quite literally, whilst you're turning, the car over steers and steers too much and therefore the back begins to slide and come round. So ultimately it can end up in you spinning or running off the track trying to correct it. There's a couple key causes that can create oversteer. Um, the most common of which is over acceleration. And of course you may want to do this deliberately in some occasions if you're trying to drift. But of course, if we're in a race car, we're not trying to drift a race car and you don't really have much of a, uh, a good amount of steering lock to counter it and try and drift anyway. So it's never ideal to drift in a race car to try and go fast, um, but you can still get oversteer if you're a little bit overzealous with the accelerator pedal, put it down too fast, the rear wheels spin, and while they're spinning, they don't have grip and therefore the rear end of the car will slide. So that's one of the more common forms of oversteer, accelerating and turning too much at the same time. Then you have going into a corner too fast, that can cause oversteer because you turn into the corner, the car's going too fast for the bend and you get to about the middle of the corner and the rear end of the car just wants to swap ends and try and spin round. Again, not particularly ideal. You can also get a slightly more technical um, cause of oversteer which we call lift off understeer. Uh, oversteer, so lift off, understeer, oversteer, um, and basically that's that's a part of understeer which we're going to talk about in a second. Where you go into a corner, there's not much grip on the front of the car, and then when you turn, you lift off the power, and then the weight goes to the front of the car, and the back goes light. The front wheels have steering lock on, and then they do grip, and then they ping the rear end around that way as well. But quite quite simply, oversteer in its base form is us talking about the rear end of the car. So the second point then on the list is understeer. Quite literally the opposite of oversteer. Understeer is when you turn the steering wheel and it literally understeers. It doesn't steer as much as you want it to. So if you imagine you're turning, the car will actually continue to go straight. Now the most common cause for understeer is generally just going too fast into a corner. And you'll even find on the road that most road cars are set up to understeer before they will oversteer. And that's because for most people, understeer is easier to control because all you need to do to fix it is just lift off the accelerator or slow down. Uh, and if you've ever gone into a corner a bit too fast in a road car, you may have even experienced a little bit of understeer where you begin to turn, it doesn't quite turn as much as you want it to. So the, the main thing as I say is going too quick. Um, you can sometimes still get it though where you're in the middle of a corner and you start to accelerate and then you also get understeer that way as well, particularly in rear wheel drive cars like the GT3 cars that we race in our India Motorsport series. So essentially in that principle, if you imagine the car in the middle of the corner, the steering lock is applied, the car's turning. If you then begin to accelerate a little bit too much, imagine there where the weight of the car goes, it goes towards the rear axle, right? So the car's weight is moving backwards over the rear wheels. That means the front wheels go light. They have less weight pushing them into the ground. And then that kind of lifts up essentially. And it means the front wheels don't grip and you don't turn and you get a bit of understeer. So Putting the accelerator in too early can cause that problem. Uh, and again, you just have to then back off and go again. So that's why it's really important that you don't accelerate out of a corner until you know you can keep the accelerator down. If you go too soon, you end up running wide and having issues. And as we saw in part one, if you accelerate really, really aggressively, you may even induce oversteer. So it's, uh, it's never a good idea. You should always be really smooth on the, on the accelerator pedal, especially on more high powered cars. 
So there you have it, oversteer and understeer covered off so far. Let's move on and take a little bit of a look at what I mean by balanced throttle there. So now we've looked at understeer and oversteer, we're gonna look at one of the solutions to managing that when you're out on the track. Um, it may just be a situation you have to deal with anyway, it may be your setup's not quite right, if the tires are getting hot or cold at one end of the car, <clears throat> you might start to develop one or more or the other. So balanced throttle is a good way to keep the car level for a fast flowing corner particularly. It can help in many corners, but for a faster corner, definitely can help you out. So I've got a clip here from our own Dom Stallman at Kyle Army at one of our races we've done in the past. And you can watch as he goes through Sunset Bend. It's a really long downhill right hand corner. The car can really easily spin out on you here. And this is a good way of just seeing um, how he uses the throttle to, to manage the car. So uh, we're coming up now at half speed so you can see. And I've left the HUD on because I want you to look in the bottom right at his accelerator feed. So at the moment it's full power. He's gonna briefly tap the brakes, <coughs> slows the car down, but then immediately he's bringing the power back in. You see it hovers around half and then a little bit more and then around half again. He's just feathering it between that halfway point, briefly gets to full power has to lift a little bit, that's actually not ideal, then back to full. But it's that mid corner section, so let's do that again. I'll just uh, speed up so we get back to where we want to go. Right, let's do that again, but even slower. So I've slowed it right down now. Again, watch that throttle trace. Okay, look, it goes right down as we enter the corner, a bit of break, and then now look, from here onwards, we're sort of coming into mid corner it sits around that middle mark. And what he's doing is he's holding the weight of the car in the middle. So if it starts to go a bit too far towards the back, he lifts off the power, it brings it forward again. If it starts to go too far forward and the rear goes a bit light, you just put a little bit of power on again. Of course, if you do too much, you get oversteer because you'll, you'll induce wheel spin. So you've got to kind of find that balance. And that's, that's why you see him feathering it. And he's got great feel and control over the car and is able to use that to keep the car steady and uh, essentially drive around what would probably have been an oversteer issue otherwise. So by keeping that power on through the corner at a steady rate, it's what we call balance throttle. Last one up then is trail braking. And just like with balance throttle, it's very much taking into consideration the weight transfer of the car and how we can manipulate that to, to basically make it do what we want and get the grip where we want in the car. So I've got a clip here from when I was racing in the AMG, chasing down uh, Roland Stallman and it's a really good example of just how I use this to get a bit more grip out the front end. The AMG particularly likes to, or benefits from trail braking more than other cars. So mid-engine cars like the Porsche, for example, might be a bit too snappy if you do too much trail braking, but the, uh, the sort of front or kind of more mid-engined feeling car of the AMG um, will benefit from trail braking quite a bit. So I'm gonna hit play on this clip once fast at full speed um, and then I'll break it down a little bit slower so you can see what I'm talking about. So we're crossing the start finish line into turn one at Zolder. And you'll notice I get a tighter line in the car ahead. He actually looks a bit twitchy and take a chunk of time out of him going through the corner. So let me just uh, go back then and we'll just break this down to a slightly slower speed. And just like with balanced throttle, I want you to look at the trace in the bottom right for the brake this time. Okay, so you'll see the green power one go off and then the brake will come on and then you'll see what I'm talking about. So that should do us at that sort of speed. So the brake is on. Now watch as it goes off, it goes off slowly. You see that? It's not just an instant off. And actually there's just another tiniest little press of it just before the apex. And what I'm basically doing is easing off so that the weight still stays forward on the nose of the car. If you imagine just coming straight off the brake pedal the nose just pings up and then you get understeer. And if you accelerate, you then make it even worse. So just by tapering off the brake pedal slowly and trail braking, I then get the weight held on the front of the car for longer and I essentially get more front end grip on the way into the corner. It's a great way to get around having, having a bit of understeer essentially. So we looked at how balanced throttle can help with both understeer and oversteer, but particularly oversteer. Well, trail braking will help reduce um, understeer. So one last time, let me just uh, get us towards the end of the straight and I'll slow it down again. And I'll go even slower this time. Right, there we go. Wait for the HUD to go away so you can see the trace. There it is in the bottom right. 
you just see it easing back on the pedal. And if you look at the um, actual foot on the pedal, then you'll see that again, it is just gradually lifting the same way you can see that throttle trace coming off slowly. So um, it's a really, really good one. You can see it on the graphs and the data as well. If a driver's kind of got a short, sharp stab of the brake, or if they're actually feeding in and out to have more control over it. Well, there you have it then for the first four parts of the Motorsport Explained. I'd quite like to do more of this as a series, so please you know, let me know what you think of it. And also if you've got any ideas or questions or different aspects of motorsport that you'd like to see explained in a bit more detail. Um, I've certainly got some more stuff that I'd like to do, but do get in touch and let me know. And uh, yeah, it'd be great to hear what you think. Oh,